Hey, I'm Natalie Abbott. And I'm Vera Schmitz. We are sisters who host the Dwell Differently podcast. We help you memorize and meditate on one Bible verse every month. And all month long on our podcast, we talk about what that verse means, why it matters, and how we can apply that verse to our daily lives. Hey, welcome back to the Dwell Differently podcast. It's your host, Natalie Abbott, and it's a special day because there are five Thursdays this month, in case you did not know. And because of that, we get to have a special guest with us today. Her name is April Harper, and she is the new Dwell CEO. She's been doing this with us for a couple months, but the reality is she's been doing this with us for a really, really long time. So welcome, April. Hey, girl. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm so, so glad to have you on. And I'm super excited when we were talking about, well, what are we going to do with that extra podcast episode and, you know, kind of throwing around different names and ideas. And somebody was like, what about introducing April to everybody? And I'm like, oh, yes. And amen. That is the perfect idea. So here you are. Um, And for those of you, like, I get to be sort of the mouthpiece or the face for Dwell, and so does Vera. But April is so critically important to dwell and just such a great leader for our team. She is an awesome person, but I just, so I just am excited to, to have y'all meet her and hear her heart for Jesus and her, her vision for dwell. So welcome April. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be on the dwell team and to watch it grow and watch all the work that God is doing through the ministry. It is so cool. It's so cool. So tell us, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. So I'm a mom of two kids. Um, I have a husband, Stephen. Um, he is in athletics at Indiana University. Um, that's where we live in Bloomington, Indiana. And we have our, our kids are small still. They're four and six and pre-K and kinder, er, first grade this year. And um, yeah. the four. Before this, I was a teacher and um, I worked in educational consulting um, for technology and have Mm -hmm. somehow very weirdly moved around to um, end up here at Dwell. And I'm super excited about the just that work that has happened to make that possible. And for like just those mysteries that happen in your life, they are like, wow, all those things were leading to this place. And it's, it's so fun to get to do that. Okay. So I have to ask a clarification question, even though I already know the answer, but I feel like our listeners are probably like, he's in athletics at Indiana. Is he in college? What does he do? (laughs) How old are you, April? (laughs) Does he play basketball for the Hoosiers? (laughs) Oh my gosh. That does sound really weird. Um, actually my <laughs> husband is not in college. Thankfully, that would be really weird. I'm 37. Um, so super <laughs> inappropriate. Um, but my husband, he is one of the athletic directors. So he oversees different things like capital projects and, um, different sports, you know, but they help to make all the sports happen for the university. Awesome. Yes. Very good clarification for us there. (laughs) Okay. So this is kind of what you do and what you, you know, who you are. I will also like to just point out for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, April is right now in a tiny closet in a house that, because she has having a house built. So she's in an apartment. This is like the second apartment that she's been in, in the last year or in in so many months or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, like here she is. And I just love that you made the tiny space (laughs) for us to get to talk with you today. Oh my goodness. You guys, I wish you could see this place. I'm looking at like my husband's suits currently in front of me and my little child's <laughs> clothing beside me because yes, they're sharing closets because we're in a little uh, apartment right now. Mm-hmm. Our house will be finished in like uh, a little while here, but we've got um, we've got a little work to do before then. Right. I feel like this, this verse that we've been memorizing in September has been such a good verse for you about hope and knowing that like the good things are coming. <laughs> so mm-hmm. at some point your house is actually going to be finished, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. It will. It really will. And we, I love building houses. Yeah. I like feel like in another life, like that's what I would do. Like if I had like another extra 50 years on me. Oh, yeah. Um, 
but that's the part <laughs> of it where like, you know, we're thinking about coming on to dwell and being a part of this team is like, I have, I do have so many passions and so many careers I would like to have. Mm-hmm. Um, but like Natalie and I, I'm sure we'll talk more about like, it's just, you, you only have one, like one life. And you while you can have-, have a few careers in it, um, I'm like my, in my time, if my time was running out, if it was running short, like, what do I really want to be focusing my life on? And, and so that's really mm-hmm. what I'm here to talk about today. Awesome. Okay. So before we get into all of that, let's talk about what is your favorite verse? I would love to hear, I don't know what your favorite verse is. Mm. Yeah, I would say like these verses, you know, it's so hard to say favorite, like those mantras though, like you have these mantras for like different seasons of your life. And, um, you know, there was a time where like for your treasure, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also that verse like was my Mm. absolute mantra of like where I invest, I know I'm going to love where those, those people that I have a hard time loving, if I invest in them, then I know I'm going to love them or these, um, certain Mm -hmm. ministries or certain organizations that I know need the support and need the love. If I invest in them, then I will care for them and I will, uh, be able to support them in a, in a great way. Um, but currently and where I feel like my like life verse, um, stands more is, So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And that's from Isaiah 41. And I feel like this, um, the conversation about fear is absolutely so in line with like how we're talking about career and making these life choices that what Mm. are the things that you're going to use as those like pillars for why you would make your life choice. And I've always yeah. tried desperately to not let that be around fear. There are good fears. Mm. There are very good fears to have rational fears <laughs> and things. I, right. mean, I need to take care of my family. I need to not die. Right. I need to protect, you know, there are rational fears, but um, a lot of the fears that I feel like I have had have not have, um, I've been able to overcome because of knowing that the Lord is good and that he has good plans for me and that he has a life set out before me that I need to step into and not be afraid for kind of earthly reasons. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think that's, that's a really good word. I think that sometimes we really get hung up on those things as people because we are limited and we only can understand so much, but to have a verse like this going through your mind, you know, that God is God and that he is my God and that he's the one that strengthens me and he's the one that helps me. He's the one that upholds me, you know, and he's capable of doing all of those things. What an awesome awesome verse for, for anybody to memorize in any season of life. But especially like you said, when you're making these huge life decisions that really matter, like what are we basing those decisions on and and having something like that be the foundational thing that we're thinking about is really, really significant. Um, so it's a lot of why we do what we do over here as well, because Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time with that, like with the same verse, just rolling around in my head because I need those words, because I need that reminder constantly of who God is and and who he has called me to be. Um, But I would love to hear a little bit more, April, about how you met Vera. So, so even though April was like, well, you know, I did all these other things and now I'm doing this and it seems random, like it's so not random. (laughs) And I remember actually meeting you through Vera years and years ago. Like I had come to Bloomington where they were living, um, at the time to visit Vera and, and April and her husband, Stephen just were like walking down the street and end up like sitting with us for a little while and chatting. And I remember she left the table and I was like, I really like her. I mean, I like Stephen too. I'm not going to say anything bad about Stephen, but, <laughs> but I just remember thinking, wow, Vera, I am so glad that you have a friend like that here in Bloomington. I was just so excited for her and thankful. So, so how did you meet Vera though? Oh yeah. Well, I still remember that day of meeting you and it like sticks in my memory so much. Um, so how sweet that was. Vera and I met, it was so crazy because, well, we really met at church and, um, 
my husband had like been in a class with her. Um, but she, I met her then at church because she had recognized him and we had chatted and we were kind of like, you know, just kind of one off, like sort of friendly folks to each other. But there was a time mm -hmm. when, um, we've had somebody on the podcast before and um, we've done work to support a ministry called Scarlet Hope. So if listeners, if you have heard of Scarlet Hope or um, through um, Dwell, but also um, if you have not, and you, you should look up Scarlet Hope right now and look at the ministry that they do and support them. Um, it is such a powerful ministry, but um, Scarlet Hope is a ministry that one of my very best friends from high school started um, in Louisville, Kentucky, and it is to help women um, who are in the adult entertainment industry. So in sex trafficking, helping people through that, but helping people to also have careers and um, get employment of other kinds, help with their childcare. But number one, show them who Jesus is. And so like they would say, their mission is to show the hope and love of Jesus to every woman, no matter what their occupation is. And so I had done some work with that ministry because um, that was my friend who had started that. And I had gone into the, um, some of the strip clubs that are around in Louisville with, with my friend. And I was, had just been praying in Bloomington with some friends, some girls here of, we need to start doing this too um, in, in the, in the club mm -hmm. that is in our our town here. And so, um, I'd been praying for that and just wanting to bring meals to women in the, in the club in the same way that Rochelle and her ministry does. And so I had spoken in front of the church that we were attending and said like, you know, this is something I'm praying for. I'm looking for an open door of like somebody who would know someone who owns, like who owns the club. And, um, I'm, I just know God's going to provide this. And so I'm coming before you, if you would pray with me with, for this. And if you would, um, you, you know, just, if you do know anyone to sh share them with me. And so I, um, I left, I went downstairs, I was running the kids ministry at that time. And Vera comes down mm -hmm. and she's like, this sounds really crazy what you're talking about, but I know them <laughs> and I have, I'll help you. Uh, and, and so she and I yeah. went from there and she ended up, you know, asking for permission. And we started going into the nightclub here in town, um, week after week. Um, we went in for months and even years. Um, and, and so I feel like the basis of our relationship was always very deep and very mm -hmm. much of like allowing God to show us that he does have this path. He's gone before you and just go for it. He's called you to do this thing. Just go for it. Like you don't have time to start thinking about all the things that of reasons why you should not do this. Cause there are plenty mm. of reasons when you rationally <laughs> think about why I should not yeah. do that or she should not do that. Um, yeah. but it was, um, it's like going far beyond that. So she and I started out very deep, very fast and, but we became very close mm. and had a lot of trust in each other because of the nature of that relationship of like being partners going in and, um, setting aside all fear and just loving on girls and making relationships and, um, serving food. That's amazing. I absolutely love that story. I remember when Vera told me that, that that happened and, and how like, she actually, it was like, almost like, I'm, a, I'm afraid to admit that I <laughs> like, that I do know that guy. Like, I know that guy, he works out at my gym. I talk to him. I know who he is. And, um, just like overcoming that fear and recognizing like here is a person who desperately needs Jesus and the people in his employment desperately need Jesus. And I can't hold on to that information. Like I have to step out and be like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just what a beautiful uh, result there was um, both in that ministry and then in just like the long-term benefit of being such good friends, um, like having each other in your lives is just so, so really, really cool to see. Um, and uh, so I'm going to fill in just a little part of the middle part of that story. So then I, of course I got to meet April a couple of times and as we started with dwell April was just like instantaneously a resource for us. Um, 
she just was always right there with great ideas and help. And she was working, doing a lot of like marketing and things like that. And it was like, anytime we had a question, April was like, Hey, I'm not just going to give you an answer. I'm going to stay with, with you until two in the morning and, and walk you through how to do that thing or whatever. And so as much as it might seem like April kind of came in out of the blue, April has been behind the scenes supporting and loving on us as well for literally years since the very, very beginning. Um, but I would love to hear when you first heard about Dwell from Vera, what did you think? Were you like, you are crazy. What are you talking about? Or were you like, I'm in? <laughs> yeah. So like when she first started Dwell, she and I were in a Bible study together with just like two other girls. And we were being mentored by this wonderful woman at church. And um, she came in that day, it was like the week before Christmas. And she was like, I have a little gift for you. I'm going to go home. I actually made these. It's a tattoo. <laughs> and it's this verse. And it's the first letter of each word. And I hope you like can memorize the verse with me. And and we were like, what? And so she she had started it like that week. She had just like made the mm -hmm. the very first kit and it um it was in brown a little brown envelope. And um I remember just thinking, that is like the best idea. And so but when mm -hmm. she did it, I was not surprised at all. That is just Vera. She has the best ideas. She just does. She just has she the does. best ideas. And so she always comes up with these ideas that like no one else would think of, but are like, duh, once you like know. And so <laughs> I loved it so right. much though, because it made this like this thing that is actually really challenging to memorize. It made it so achievable and so accessible mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. And so when she introduced it, I, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. But like, wait, you're like starting a company who has like the gumption to do that? You know, like, I just would never like I did that. It was like not in my personality. And at least at that mm -hmm. time, and I was so impressed by her that she was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to share it with, with some more people. Like if it could help me to learn yeah. it, because you know what? I had seen her story and all, you know, all the walk, you know, her writing all her affirmations and all the verses on her arms. Mm -hmm. We've gone to a bunch of her track meets and, you know, I had seen all of that arm, you know, and, um, and known about this method, but then for her to actually take the step and make mm -hmm. it into something that could support other people and not just be for herself, that I just had so much respect for and so much like, I will do anything to support you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, so April was with us then for, like I said, years and years, just supporting us and helping us. And, um, yeah, I, I remember first hearing Vera say, I'm going to start this company and feeling very much the same way. Like, wow, that's incredible. I love mm -hmm. that. And, you know, how I kind of came on was like, Natalie, can you edit this for me? Natalie, can you look at this? Can you, you know, look over my website? And, and eventually I was just like, can I just write that for you actually? <laughs> and so that's kind of how that, that developed out of, out of, um, yeah, just a complimentary skill that I have, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Um, but April, so for a really long time, you were kind of in the background doing these things. And I just have to confess that Vera and I, from almost the very beginning, were like, wouldn't it be cool if April could come and work with us? Like, I mean, because you already kind of were, but we were always just like, wow, April she is such a boss lady. Like she knows what she's doing and she has all these great ideas and like all of the things that we are not good at, like, I don't know, leadership <laughs> or, um, execution or, um, you know, administration here you were just always stepping in and giving us these great tips and pointers and things. And we, sh we just always were so wild by you. And so really it's been, it's been a long, long time coming, but if we had been able to hire you from the beginning, I think we would have. Um, but, but that's not your story. Your story was that you were in the middle of a career doing something completely different. And Vera was like, Hey, April, um, what do you think? You want to come actually like go full time with us? 
<laughs> what was your first thought? When Vera called me to ask me to join the team full time, I my first reaction was, that sounds amazing, but I how can I do that? No. <laughs> like I yeah. I cannot. Yeah. And to fill you guys in on this, it's like I I, you know, I, I was a teacher and then I went to work for this company um, called Five Star Technology Solutions. It's an awesome company. And I'd been doing consulting there for superintendents on how to integrate technology um, in a meaningful way. That was the first thing I did. And over time, over my seven years that I was there, I, um, I moved around and moved my way kind of up into a role as vice president of strategy. And so in that role, I, you know, oversaw just like company strategy and sales and marketing. And um, I learned a lot of skills. And through that company, like I, I learned skills that I would just never have been able to learn had I stayed a teacher. Um, mm. It's all these business skills and and meanwhile, during all of those seven years, I've been earning my um, doctoral degree. So I'm going to defend my dissertation here any day. But I, um, yes, I was, go girl. Working, <laughs> and I was working towards all these things so that all went together. It all felt super bundled yeah. and purposeful. And I am very passionate about education. And and I never thought I want to leave my job there. Like that's just not something I ever felt. I really loved my job. And I loved all the learning that I got to do. And the, and the company is just super wonderful. Um, if anybody's looking for a job in ed education technology, um, <laughs> you should go there. Um, but when Vera called me and asked me, you know, she said, we're at this point in Dwell where we, we've we grown so much. It's just expanded so much. And, like, we're ready for you to organize it on this different level that that Natalie and I, we've got our own passions and our own pursuits for how we're going to serve people through this business and ministry. And you can take this other part so that we're able to do that. Mm -hmm. And for three days, I told her no. And <laughs> three just, very hard days on our side. Cause when she came back and told me April said, no, I was like, man, what are we going to do? Like April is the unicorn. <laughs> we need April. <laughs> I just couldn't like in my, like those gut reactions from me, mm. I just couldn't quite wrestle with how I would pivot like that, how I would mm -hmm. give up what felt like give up on everything I'd worked for. And yeah. And looking back on it now, that word give up or on everything I was looking for that just, it's so silly. Like none of that made any sense, but those were those gut reactions. And I, I was just praying and praying, and praying. And I had asked our, our small group to pray for me on, I was night of day two. Mm. Like, will you pray for me? Like I'm wrestling with this. I, if I had, like, I, I just don't know what to do. And, and then the next day was Sunday, the third day. And I, I went to church and my husband and I were like sitting there and receiving the message. And he like whispered to me at like the same time that I like went to him to say something like, it is absolute disobedience if I don't do this. And I just couldn't mm. believe it. So in like this matter of like 24 hours, I had been a hard no to, <laughs> I have to do yeah. this, no matter what that means for me financially, mm. no matter what I even will be called or what that means for my <laughs> other job and all these other projects I'm mm -hmm. so invested in and finishing. I know God is going to work this out because I'm hearing this mm. right now, like not a loud voice. It is just the Holy Spirit speaking to me saying, you have to do this. And mm. So I call I, I I called Vera and said I don't know what this means, but I'm in. I'll do it. <laughs> and and I wrestle, you know. And I, uh, if I could tell you, like, what was that difference? What were those things then? If I look back on, because after I, that moment happened, mm. I never looked back again. I was never I never wrestled again. It was always mm. from this 
okay, that's what I'm doing. That's my new life. Like I, <laughs> this is my journey and it led me to this. And, and I could see then how all those things were to contribute to that company. Like I was contributing, I was fully in on it, but I did learn all these things that I then could transfer to this company. And mm-hmm. I, I felt like, you know, that it wasn't for nothing. And it wasn't like this twisty turny kind of random thing. It was building all for this and that that's how God works. You know, it is this just mysterious thing that we don't need to know ahead of time. I just needed to know then. And so I made the Mm. action then, but if I could share like going back and, and when, if I said, why did I say no? What were those feelings of no? Like the number one thing is not that it doesn't make sense and that the number one thing is an issue of pride. Like hmm. I was able to see that it's it's really pride that's making me say no because hmm. in that job, I could go to a party and I'll be around a bunch of people <laughs> that I don't know and just easily say like what I do and it makes sense to people and it's really easy and you just fly by and and it also feels like you've been on this trajectory and you've achieved something and and that all, all right. feels good to us. And I'm but if I if I really say to myself then, if I have only one life here, I am not going to make decisions based on pride. In my core, yeah, mm. I'm gonna try. That's certainly what's gonna happen first. But <laughs> if I then listen three to the days. Holy Spirit, <laughs> right? But if I listen to the Holy yeah. Spirit and 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 then make the decision, then I'm going to actively choose to not. And I'm going to actively choose to not base it also on fear, either socially, financially, or just that path, this like this made up path that we have for ourselves and where we're going to end up and what we're going to be able to accomplish mm-hmm. in our life. And mm-hmm. so I'm just here to say, like, if you are struggling with your career or you're struggling with your your own calling, like where you feel like you're meant to be. Yeah. I, what I had to decide for myself is if I died five years from now or three years from now, what would I have hoped my last five years or three years were spent doing? What am I contributing mm. to the world in, in the very most way um, that makes the very most impact? And and so for me, it is helping people to know the Bible more because that, I know that that is going to be um, most impactful. Second or third, yeah, it's going to be education because it helps people. And, and, and that's still an absolute passion area for me. Um, yeah. But a very, very, very core, it's helping people know who Jesus is and have his word mm-hmm. in their heart. I love that, April. I just love that. And you know, one of the things that you said, I think that I've felt before when I'm making those kinds of decisions is I would be disobedient if I didn't do this thing. I really do feel like there have been times when I've looked at something straight in the eye and I've thought, that's crazy. Why would I do that? And yet in my, in my deep in my core, I ask myself, how can I not do this thing? It, it seems nutty, but I, I intensely believe that this is the thing that God is calling me to do. And I've, I've heard other believers say that before, that they, that they just get this sense in their core that this is the thing and they don't, they can't explain it, but it's, it is, it's the Holy spirit, you know, whispering in our, in our ears, go this way, do this thing. Um, and, and recently in my, in my quiet times, I've been reading about Abraham and I'm always so struck mm-hmm. by how many times God just tells me to do something like legit crazy. Like that <laughs> is just super crazy. Like, hey, leave everything you've ever known and all that you have and go to this place you've never been. And he's like, cool. Yep. Got it. Doing it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I want to be like that. I want to be that person. I want to look back on my life, like you said, in three years or five years or when I'm 80 or whatever, and be like, I may not have the most flashy, amazing life. I may not have earned a ton of money. I may not have the most success in of anybody. But to me, it was a success because I did the things that God called me to do. I walked in the path that he laid out before me. Um, Amen. 
Yes. And, and you're doing and it. it. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm failing. I'm d- taking little wayward paths sometimes and like, oh, look at this. Um, or I'm, d- I'm looking at other people's paths and I'm like, dang, I wish I could be on that path right now. <laughs> but the reality is like, it's just so good to follow the Lord. And it has been such a blessing to the, our whole team have longed for that gap to be filled that Vera and I, neither of us were like, I don't know. Do you want to plan something? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. What do we do? And April comes in and she's like, okay, so I've got a schedule. And I'm like, yes. (laughs) Uh, so none of the things, like you said, none of the, none of the gifts that God has given you, the things that you have learned, the ways that he has gifted you have been lost at all. And they are certainly not lost on me because we spent so much time without you that we just feel so grateful to have you. Um, so thank you for being with us, April. We just love you. Um, one last question, like you're the CEO now lady. So Tell us, what are your hopes for Dwell? If you were going to say, in five years, I want Dwell to be this, how would you, how would you answer that question? Yeah, That's, that is the way to start your morning every morning, is to think about that. <laughs> um, one of the things that you know, we come across at Dwell uh, you know, is that people find it so challenging to memorize the Bible. Mm -hmm. And people will know general concepts from the Bible and then not be able to like track it down. And, and while that's fine, it's great to know the general concepts and, 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 but people feel a lot more confident to share their faith or share an answer when they're asked, when they, they feel like they know where to turn to. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I know that's in there, but where is that? And how do I share that then with my friend who's asking this kind of tough question? Um, one of the things that, you know, my kids are like, they're in Awana. They're, you know, they're four oh, and yeah. six and, and they're oh, in yeah. Awana and they memorize verses um, every week in Awana and, you know, it's in their books and all this. And it it's very normal at that age. If you go to Awana, mm-hmm. if anybody knows what that is, um, to, <laughs> to learn that, to learn that. But there's this point in our in our life where the Awana period is over. And mm-hmm. even though we go to church or you're in all the small groups or you're in all the things, it's not a part of our general United States Christian discipline to know the the word like verse by verse um, and yeah. to know even where some of these concepts came from. And so... Um, as, as much as we want people to memorize the same verse with us every month, we want you to get the kit. We want you to memorize that exact verse with us and be in community with us and, and do it all together. Yes, we want that. But more than that, I want and we want as a group to push forward a movement where people know the word and where mm-hmm. people feel like that is, um, where that is more normalized. And so this yeah. movement to memorize verses, that's what we at Dwell really want to do and what I really want to push forward. So whether that be joining up with books, joining up with conferences, joining up with other organizations that are writing Bible studies and all the things, because instead of just saying, hey, now memorize the verse. Instead, people need the tools to do that. And so that's where Dwell can come alongside and um, create more of a movement versus just like sell a bunch of kits to people. Um, so that's yeah. my heart for it. And that's where I think like um, we we can make a uh, we can be a part of that story and be a part of people's story on the, on this larger platform is to do that with with our time. And, and, and that comes down to partnerships. So I hope that we get to partner with lots of other amazing organizations that are already reaching people and just mm-hmm. provide like the toolkit to help um, take memorization like into or get memorization into the new habits that people form. I love that. Yes. Amen. I want everybody to memorize scripture. It is so powerful and amazing. And I I just, I can't imagine my life without God's actual words in me. Um, 
giving me truth and, and giving me uh, security when I feel anxious or giving me hope when I feel hopeless or reminding me of who I am when I feel unlovable or whatever those things are, that, 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 that those true words are the thing. Like, that's the thing. That's how we know God. And if we can have the thing in us, like know it really well, preach it to ourselves when we wake up at 3 a.m. and we're, we're freaked out about something or when we're sitting in the car line or when our friend has some devastating news, when those are the words that come out of our mouths, when those are the words that are in our hearts, it just changes everything. Um, it's, it's so powerful and good. So I love your vision, Absolutely. April. I am on board. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, ma'am. And I will say too, like that Vera, you know, this is like a sign of a good friend, you know, like I, there've been periods of time where I, well, those are the things I hope and dream for dwell. Like those are the things that, you know, I struggle with myself and, and Vera, she has come beside me and said, girl, I hear what you're saying to yourself right now. And it's not truth. And she even pointed me in the direction of Jenny Allen's book, get out of your head. If you've not read that, that you deal with some of the negative thoughts, you know, I urge, you know, listeners to, to read that book. She, she was like, you've got to read this book right now. And cause I see what's happening with your wiring and your brain right now. And, and, and I did listen or yeah, I listened to the book cause that's how I do it. But, um, (laughs) it did help me so much. And, but that same thought process of like how, when we memorize these verses together at dwell and we, we listen to the podcast, we read the blog, you hear the context, you understand like how all these pieces go together. And then in your, and it sticks in your brain even that much more, um, as much more as like even the tattoo helps you. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that. And I just appreciate Natalie and Vera, our co-founders, like, trusting me so much to come alongside them and, and support the ministry, the work that we do here at dwell. And it is like one of the greatest honors of my life to get to serve people through this. Mm. Amen. Same, same. I, I, I feel the same. It is, it's mind blowing that I get to do this with my life. It is really, really cool. I'm, I'm thankful all the time for it. Cause it's really, it really is my passion for people to, to know Christ and to, to know his word. So awesome. Well, we are out of time, April. It has been just lovely. Um, I feel like I know a little bit even more details to some things I didn't know before. Um, but I hope that you listeners just really feel encouraged by this. And I would encourage you if you are trying to discern what is next, Find a Bible verse that speaks to you and just get out a little three by five card and write out the first letter of every word in that Bible verse and then write out the verse on the backside and put it in your pocket and carry it around with you or write it in Sharpie on your arm like Vera always used to do and Mm -hmm. have it with you until it really is with you and allow God's word to inform those decisions because that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to guide you and lead you in paths that are good for you. And he's got them already laid out for you. So you just learn that you learn that verse and you walk in it and, and uh, let it bless you. So anyhow, thank you so much, April. And uh, it has just been a joy and I'm sure I'll see you in a meeting later today or something. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks so much, Natalie. Love you. Love you. Hey, I know you know that we love memorizing Bible verses over here at Dwell. And all month long, we are talking about a Bible verse. But did you know that we have a membership where you actually get a kit in the mail that comes with temporary tattoos, a key tag, and a print that has this month's design on it. And it's always just the most beautiful design. But those temporary tattoos and that key tag and that print, those are visual reminders all throughout the month to help you remember and dwell on this month's first. So go to dwelldifferently.com and check out our membership.